If anyone thinks that Christians regard unchastity as a supreme vice, he is quite wrong. The sins of the flesh are bad, but they are the least bad of all sins. All the worst pleasures are purely spiritual. The pleasure of putting other people in the wrong, of bossing, of patronizing, and spoiling sport, and backbiting, the pleasures of power, of hatred. For there are two things inside me competing with the human self which I must try to become. They are the animal self and the diabolical self. The diabolical self is the worst of the two. That is why a cold, self-righteous prig who goes regularly to church may be far nearer to hell than a prostitute. But of course it is better to be neither. <laughs> Prigs and prostitutes, losing my religion, next on Soap. I'm Don Waite. And I'm Chris Dorman. And welcome back to So What. Chris, you know, a few weeks back we had the opportunity to be at Audio Feed again, and I can tell you that there was some music that I loved, and there was some music that I didn't care for so much. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of different kinds of music, even at the Sanctuary Tent, believe it or not. That's right. It's not all the same. You know, I got to tell you, when we were kids, it was a lot more simple. You either liked heavy metal or you didn't. <laughs> but you know, there's so many different kinds of metal. Right. You know, there's death metal, and black metal, and speed metal, and thrash metal, and heavy metal, and power metal, and glam metal and you know all this stuff why does that matter well because it's funny how we will have a genre that we love and then look down on those not just the music but look down on those who like a music that isn't our thing it's true we do make we make judgments right? not just about the music itself but about those who actually like that music right I can't believe that sissy only likes power metal. <laughs> or old people like me like melodic metal, right? right? It's right. like I'm a dinosaur. Right? I mean, look, you know? we can all agree that we n none of us like country music, right? <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. But, but the difference is, if I identify a preference, that's one thing. But if my preference becomes a platform, Chris, for my judging others, actually judging the quality of the person, that's a whole different thing. And see, and this is something that everybody does. You are guilty of it. Right. You are. You do this. You do this probably every day, and you don't even realize it. As we, in this series, we're looking at sin, and we're looking at those things that we tend to ignore, right. or we just, we just assume it's just part of living in a fallen world, and we don't really treat them seriously. And consequently, we don't deal with them, and we yeah. wonder why we're feeling this lack of intimacy in our faith. It could mm. be that there are these sins in our life that we just don't deal with. And the sins of self-righteousness and judgmentalism yeah. are sins that are so common that we just take them for granted, that there's part of being in our lives and we don't really deal seriously with them. We don't treat them as the horrific sins that they are. Well, Chris, because at the end of the day, we, we feel like we're justified in whatever judgment we're making That's because true. I'm right yeah. and they must be wrong. Yeah. And if they're wrong, there's something wrong with them. Right. It's certainly not wrong with me and so we're, we are so deluding ourselves because we believe we're right. And you may be right. Maybe it's a, an issue that it's, it's black and white and you are right and the other person is wrong. Your attitude toward that person matters. Right. The it fact that you're, you can be right and be completely wrong at the same time. Right. I know from lots of, sadly, lots of personal experience, being completely right on a, on a scriptural doctrine and being completely wrong in the spirit in which that discussion takes place. Right. Beloved, we, everybody does this. Everybody is guilty of it. And think about self-righteousness, okay? We live in, a, in an immoral world. And if you weren't a Christian, you know, your whole life, like me, I wasn't a Christian my whole life. I didn't become a Christian until I was 22 years old. And so I lived as a pagan because I was a pagan. Right. And right. so it's easy when you become a Christian, you look down and you see how people live and you're like, oh my gosh, look how they live. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to cast judgment on them without realizing the only thing separating you from them is the grace of God. That's it. You know, Paul said, what do you have that you didn't receive? Mm. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. You don't get to take credit for the fact that you're not like those people you're looking down upon. Because the only thing that's separating you two is the grace of Jesus. So going back to that quote that we read, yeah, right. First yeah. off, it's like, what's a prig? <laughs> <laughs> right? What, what in the world is that? Right? A prig really is a Pharisee. Right. A Pharisee. That's what a prig is. A prig is a Pharisee. Someone who is self-righteous, who looks down their nose on everybody else, who's prim and proper, who externally does all the right things, but in their heart, selfish, wicked, 
judgmental, self-righteous. Right. And yeah. what about that prayer in Luke? You got two people <sighs> coming to God to pray. And there's some self-righteousness going on there, isn't it? Right. Self-righteousness and judgment and judgmentalism are really two heads of the two sides of the same coin. You know, because if you're self if you're self-righteous, you're going to be judgmental about others. And if you're judgmental, right. it's because you see yourself in some way as morally or as otherwise superior to them. Right. And so you think of that prayer, right? And the Pharisee and the tax collector, or the tax, the, the yeah, the Pharisee and the tax collector. Right. You know, when the Pharisee prays his prayer, what about was it in sort of a modern language? And you have a Christian and a heroin addict. Okay. Right. And the Christian says, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like other people. I go to church twice a week. I read my Bible three or four days a week. And hey, I'm not a drug abuser. I'm not like that guy. I'm much better than he is. Right. And the drug abuser can't even raise his eyes to heaven and says, forgive me, for I'm a sinner. Do you look down on people who abuse drugs? Do you look down on people who don't share your social station? Do you look down on people who maybe have a higher social station? Do you, right? Do you think in some way that you're better than them because of the things you do or you don't do? Now, there, there are times in Scripture where we are, we are urged, we are commanded yeah, to absolutely. judge. First Corinthians, it's right there, and I'll talk about that in the Facebook post. But as a habit, as a way of life, beloved, taking your personal preferences and spiritualizing them and condemning people, like Bob likes to say, who, don't, who sin differently than you do, is not okay. It's right. sin, and it could be interfering in your relationship with God. And I got to tell you, Chris, it, if I, if Chris, if any of us have made any progress in our Christian faith, if any of us have, have been able to, to be sanctified in an area of life that we th we're talking about sin now, if the Lord is doing a work in you and you're doing better in an area, that's not cause for you to give yourself a pat on the back and to look down on somebody who's still struggling with no. it. That should be cause for great humility and great worship and praise right. to our God who is not done with us and is doing a work in us. And we're getting in the trenches with them and loving people through stuff and saying, we are in this with you. In fact, the only people who can really, at least in my view, can really show genuine, sincere compassion on those who are struggling mm. with sin are those who really see the depth of their own sin themselves. Because so, they're not going to judge that person for sinning differently. Or maybe sinning in exactly the same way. And maybe they just haven't overcome it yet because they've been there. You have no right to sit in judgment and condemnation and look self-righteously at yourself and condemn them. That just shows that you don't really understand the depth of your own sin. And that, that we're going to look at next week because yes. it could be that piece that's missing that's keeping you from really seeing, seeing this in your life, this, this plank in your eye. We want to lose our religion, Chris. We really do. Yeah, we do. Thank you for tuning in, my friends. And I'll talk to you next week. We'll see you soon.